Hello again and welcome to a new video. This is our April 2022 on a 22 plate Toyota Hilux Double Cab 2.8 D4D Auto Invincible X. This car's covered just over 9,500 miles. Uh, it's just due to go in for its first service with Toyota, which if uh, serviced every year with Toyota, the warranty on this vehicle is extendable up to 10 years in total. So a really long warranty on these vehicles. The color is burnt orange metallic. Now the car was, or the, the pickup truck I should say, is showing two keepers, although the first one is for six months. So I'm guessing that this was a, a demonstrator or pre-registered uh, by one of the Toyota dealerships and then into the last private person's name or company name. Now the whole vehicle has been machine polished to bring all the paintwork up. The, there weren't really any scratches, so to speak, but we always machine polish all of the vehicles here uh, to get the best out of the paintwork and make it look really shiny and glossy, as you can see. Now we've also fitted a Predator spoiler bar at the front, a Toyota uh, bonnet guard and Toyota wind deflectors just above the windows there. Now I'm gonna bring you round to the front and just show you the condition of the vehicle. There is no, there's no chipping at all on the front of the vehicle. There are no scuffs. Despite being um, a year old, the vehicle is like new. It's, it's not got any marks at all. If we come up onto the bonnet, now the light is playing havoc with the camera, it looks, I wonder why they call it burnt orange. It, you can see the depth of the color changes, but there are no chips at all, no scratches on the bonnet. I've checked the whole vehicle over before starting the vehicle, so I can point anything out. All of the windscreen, again, no nasty chips on there. All of the roof is in lovely condition, no marks up there wing mirrors Let's just bring you back round to the front all of the if you look at the light lenses the light brand new it's a really sharp looking vehicle we've got parking sensors at the front all of the black trims really nice condition no marks again just looks like brand new now this um, vehicle has the 360 cameras one of the cameras just below the Toyota badge there. We've got lane assist, we've got adaptive cruise control. If I bring myself down, if you look down the side of the vehicle, there are no ding dents, no ripples, it's not had any paintwork. In fact, it looks really good, this color with the black and gray details on it. We'll come around to this side now. I'll show you down the side. Oh, that was my knee. And we've got the side steps opposed to the bars, which I think the steps seem to be more popular now than the bars. We've got the cameras just up underneath for the 360 view. And if we look at the side steps, they tend, with the bars, you get like a gap there and you quite often the bars where they fix onto the vehicle, they, um, they get a lot of rust around the fixings and they chip, whereas this has got a plastic cover on it. So you don't get any um, chipping and you don't get any rust marks. The mud guards, all of the wheels, really nice condition. Let me just move out a little bit. And if you look inside the wheel arches as well, Really nice and clean in there. <clears throat> we have keyless entry on the vehicle, so you can lock the door and unlock it with the button. To show you the back of the cab. We've got the privacy glass at the back of the vehicle as well to keep the sun out. Again, already nice up there. 
filler cap, no marks or scratches. I'll bring you down. Incidentally, there's no marks on any of the wheel arch covers. Wheels are immaculate. And if you look inside around the wheel arches, the frame, all in lovely condition. Mud guards. Looking back towards the front of the vehicle. And then the bumpers, rear parking sensors, no marks at all. We look at the top on the steps, there's no scuff marks. We've got the 13 pin, I think it's 13 pin, let me just check. Yeah, 13 pin plug socket, Toyota tow bar fitted from new. And again, all of the bumper on this side, all of the light lenses. Now if we look across the back of the tailgate, no ding dents at all. No marks or scratches at the top there. And just in case you're wondering, that's not a dent there. There is a line that runs around and up the other side and it fades out as it goes up. Rear camera. And the Line X covering is what they, uh, that is brought up over the top. So I've forgotten what the terminology is for now. Over rail, I think they call it. So it'll protect right up onto the top. Now the Line X is a rubberized, sort of rubberized plasticky coating that is sprayed directly onto the paintwork, onto the bed. Now the benefit of that is if you have a plastic tray, stones, uh, you know, little bits of grit get under the cover, the plastic tray as they call it, and uh, it scratches through the paint and it just rusts the bed. Whereas the Line X is directly onto the paintwork, so nothing gets underneath it. It's much better protection, very easy to wash out as well, and everything is coated. I think going forward, most people will probably opt for this. It's a little bit more expensive than a plastic tray, but much better. It gives much better protection down here. Now, we usually like to fit the damper kit with the, uh, li uh, what's it called? The lift and damper kit, I think they call it, which gives you the little damper at the side for the tailgate to drop down nice and smoothly and then the torsion bar that's usually fitted in here will allow you to lift this up with just a couple of fingers because they're quite heavy but uh, they're on back order at the moment so we're waiting for some to come into stock so depending as and when someone inquires on the vehicle it might be on the vehicle or we could uh, maybe get one um, and send it to you so just come round show you this corner let's pop this back up but as you can see the condition it's just like new no scratches in there at all let's bring you down here again everything's in really nice condition all of the wheels all of the tires the side steps on this side or the side step runs all the way along all around the door handles trims glass this mirror cover really nice condition just come back out one more time okay so we'll take a look inside we'll start on the passenger side Oh, unlock it. So starting with the door card, we've got the JBL sound system speakers up at the top there. In fact, there are extra speakers on the top there, which they've sort of taken off on the 
the 23 plates, they no longer have that additional speaker. Nice and clean all the way down there. And if we look at the door shut, in fact, there's not really any scratching, nothing to speak of. There's a couple of little scuffs. These plates are there to take the scuffs, obviously, and they're, they're like a brushed aluminium, so they do get little scratches, but all of the shuts, all the way, and all the rubbers. All up and around. And then we've got the rubber Hilux over mats. All the carpets are in really nice condition underneath. And then the leather seating. No damage on the seats. Nice big headrests. And then we've got the little cubby hole at the top here. You've got a little vent in here so you can chill drinks from the air conditioning. And then inside, locking wheel nut, books, and I think that box has got uh, a socket for the tow bar so you can change some different pin. It's like a pin adapter, basically. Let's try and show you around inside. We will show you more when we come round. Got dual climate control on the 22 plate. The 71 plates had single climate control. All of the gear shift there, no, no nasty scratches there. And all the trims. Center armrest. Big cubby hole there with a plug in there as well. Let's just come out of there. Always got to give these doors a shut. And again, rear door card, as you can see, all the way down. No damage, no scuffs, no scratches. You've got all under door lighting around here. Again, not had any hardware at all this vehicle no scratches and then if you look at the rear leather seat it doesn't even look like it's been sat in really you've got isofix you've got tethering at the back for child seats center armrest drops down isofix fittings there as i say and the backs of the front seats no damage there, nothing on the back of the centre console or oh. armrest. So all nice in there. You've always got these nice chunky bars to uh, hold on to when you get in and out, which you tend to use all the time, I find. I've done it again. They seal so well, these doors, that you need to sort of push them quite firmly. And I never want to slam them, but you need to give it a good... Good push. So there's a view at the back. Come all the way down. See up underneath there. Now, if you're looking for one with a roller shutter and bar or a hard top, please give us a call. Sometimes we've got um, one in stock, but we can get um, a discount on any new hard top. So we're just finding that sometimes we put a roller shutter on and the person that calls on the vehicle wants a hard top. So we've left this one as is for now. And then uh, if you wanted anything on the back, I can always price it for you. We can generally fit everything free of charge unless there's a little bit of wiring, depending what you're having. Uh, we might need to get the um, mechanics next door to just sort that out, but that's not a problem. So all lovely in there. As you can see, really nice condition, this vehicle. Again, all around the door handle. There we go. 
no chips or scuffs. There's no marks. Let me just turn those lights off for a second. And those fog lights, right, there we go. So the driver door card. Again, no marks on there. Nothing on the edge or down here. Now, obviously, this is the side that gets used more. There's a couple of little hairline. The, the lighting in here, the reflection is sort of highlighting it a bit, but this is just quite normal. The idea is that they're there to protect the paintwork. And you can replace them as a set of four, but they just scuff again. So you sort of wait till they get really scuffed up before you change them. Now, what you'll notice here, button top left, is a preheater, so it'll warm the car up quicker. The one on the right, the park one, that'll put on the front park sensors and that will display up in this screen here, the parking, the front. The one on the left at the bottom, which has view on it, is to bring on the 360 cameras when you're not in reverse. And the bottom right is your DPF clean, so with these vehicles, when it does a DPF clean, up on the dash here in the middle, you'll get a little graph come up, basically showing you uh, that your DPF's doing a clean. If you come to the end of your journey, you can press this button down here and it will continue to clean at idle. And it sort of does it as and when it wants to. I tend to find, but it will carry on and clean the DPF. We've got the cruise control lever there and then the radar cruise button just there and then then the uh, lane assist button to the left of it and then the other buttons there control the settings up on the top there and then this side is your volume and mode for the radio voice activation and then down here I'll try and get this in focus sorry excuse me We've got eco and power, your different drive modes. Let me just jump in now, because I can't quite reach. Let's put this handbrake down out of the way. Shut the door. That will start it up, so it's key to start. That's the uh, additional JBL speakers you get up there. So there we have it. Now using the buttons on the steering wheel on the right, if we come down, let me just make sure I don't turn this off by accident. You've got your range, you can see the mileage of on. This shows you how well you're driving for economy. And then by pressing, so the last trip that we were getting 28.5. I did a trip in one the other day, and we were cruising around about just under 70, 65 to 70. And in eco mode, we were getting th up to 33 at some points. I think they're generally around about 31, 30. Depends how heavy you are on the throttle. This is where we can see, if I just turn the steering wheel, I guess if you're off-road, it just shows you where your wheels are pointing in case you're not too sure and you don't want to hit a post or something. And then we've got digital speedo reading there. The add blue tank, let it get a little bit lower than that and then refill it. You don't want it to get too low because um, the sister, I think the sensors don't like it. And you don't want to fill it up when it's half full because you want to put as much fresh add blue in as you can. We've also got in the screen there, if I can just zoom in, uh, speed of 30 miles an hour. So it tells you the speed on the road that you're on although we are in the showroom at the moment. Now, if we go across to the right, we've got the navigation. Let's see if I can get a better, it's quite bright in here today, but okay. And then we go across one more, we've got all the dab channels, driving aids for the adaptive cruise, messages, and then settings. Now, when we go into here, lane departure awareness now you can set different um you can set the your assist so when your assist is on basically if you do not indicate to change lane the steering wheel will automatically pull you back into the lane with it turned on 
However, if you do indicate, it won't it won't come into play. So it's only if you're straying out of the lane. And then the next one down is the sensitivity, and then sway warning and sensitivity. And if we come back out of there, we've then got the collision warning and the sensitivity, which you can change there as well. Well worth having that on. And this is road speed awareness turned on and you can change the when the ignition's off you can't do it I don't think when it unless you can oh yeah excessive speed um, notification about others what's others I've never used others Ooh. yeah so you can have it so it warns you visually and audibly or the one that you can't see is only visually it annoys you if it keeps dinging you sort of wonder what's going on basically and if we come back out of there the last one is your uh, radar cruise control which is on you can turn that on and off there so if we come out of there now to use the radar cruise control as I say we'll turn it on by just pulling that lever down Put it in drive actually, I think we need to put it into gear. So bring it down, there we go, radar ready. And then using this button here, we can then set the distance we want to keep behind the car in front. So really nice feature for doing long trips. If we turn that off and then we've got the lane departure you can turn on and off from the steering wheel as well. So you don't have to faff about with buttons in the system over here. And then just to show you what's on this side, you've got the mode for the radio volume and up and down through the channels, telephone. There's all your lights there. Okay, so over to the sat nav screen. Now by plugging a lead in just down here, you can bring up Android Auto. Um, and Apple CarPlay onto the system so you can have your Google Maps, your Waze Maps on the system, all of your music, etc. We've obviously got the navigation on there as well. You can change the view like so, and audio. And then if we go into source, sorry, was it? Yeah. And then basically you've got your Bluetooth, your DAB, and then when you go on source, um, if you've got the cable plugged in, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto will come up over here. You just tap on that. We go into the menu. You've got all your different setup in here. For example, you can change the color of the display, units. I prefer the black one. Units of measurement. Uh, miles per gallon, auto change, leak, memorize, animation on, that's all on, etc. Okay, um, telephone, so pretty much everything that that's all quite straightforward in all fairness. We've got the four wheel drive system down here high two, high four, and then low four. We also have, I think this is the diff lock down at the bottom there, hill descent heated seats and turn the stop start off we've got two 12 volt plugs down here now as I say on the 22 plate which this is the 71 plate has a single this usually does the fan speed and there's only one temperature but on here these are for the dual climate and then your fan speeds in the middle so slight change there on the later ones okay let's come out of here um, the eco and eco and, and the power so when you're driving normally and you're driving at a sensible speed you will get a little green eco light come up here but if you press the eco button it brings that top section up to let you know that you're in eco mode which feels a bit flatter on the throttle but you get the best economy and then you can go into power and you get the full grunt of uh, 208 ps or 204 brake horsepower so it's come out of there and then we've got drive here 
sport auto there and you'll notice it's gone into S4 up there. We can then push the stick forwards and backwards to six speed box and use it manually. Flip it back over to the left, it's in just auto. And let's say there's a plug, I think it's a 100 watt two pin plug in there. So that all comes out. Um, I think we've covered everything in there. I'm just gonna get the, ah, oh, camera. That's what I was gonna do. Dan's gonna open the um, bonnet. You can see him at the front of the vehicle there on the left here with the 360 camera. Now down here, sorry, let me come out a little bit. Sorry, there we go. This one here gives you different warnings. Obviously you can see the tow bar and that blue section there, that will line you up with the tow bar. Over here, you can have the surround camera on or off and the there was an auto there if you flip onto the auto it will bring the um the cameras up automatic low speed now using the camera button down here if you're not in reverse you press on that one and that's the front view looking out the front with the 360 view on the side there we can also see where we're going there and there's a ah oh, there's the auto that will bring it on at low speeds sorry the cameras there we go so we've got the changes there oh i think that is in that view now pressing that button again the view button then gives you the view down the sides of the vehicle so that's looking forward yeah so looking forward there or looking forward down the side so you've got lots of um, different views from the cameras on the vehicle. Okay, let's jump out. I want to show you under the bonnet. In fact, I will turn the uh, engine off because you're not going to hear me. Okay. So this is your 2.8 four-cylinder turbocharged engine. Just trying to keep the uh, camera so you can see everything. It's very hard in here with the light changing. Let me try and get, there we go. Let's try not to play with it now. So all lovely and clean in there. Let's bring you around. Like I say, it's going to go into uh, Snow's Toyota for its first service, so that will be done. Like I say, don't forget to keep up that servicing. They changed in 2021 to a three-year warranty, extendable up to 10 years, as long as you do the servicing with Toyota. The services range from about 250 up to about 399 you know, depending how many uh, items are changed on that particular service. But uh, I always find them very fair. Fantastic, so bear with me while I try and drop this down. And they reckon about a gap like that and then just let it drop and it will sit nicely into place. So there we have it. Our 2.8 Toyota Invincible X Hilux double cab. Stunning condition and uh, that will be ready to go hopefully by the end of the week with the services done. Please give me a call with any questions on finance. We've just renegotiated uh, the finance rate from 10.4. We should be coming down a little bit to 9.9, .9, which isn't too bad considering the rates keep going up. We've got manufacturer's warranty on the vehicle, so yeah, and any questions on what to fit on the back, always happy to help. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Hope to speak to you soon. Take care now. Bye.